I actually I have a I have no, no, Scott. You have to shut up because I'm clicking on the Google <laughs> Live button, and we're live. I never. It do. is. I host Scott. <laughs> Monday, September twentieth, two thousand twenty-one, five oh one p.m. Scott has a new game that he likes to play. Um, while when I'm trying to start the show, as I'm getting ready to click on the blue go live button, he starts talking, which puts me in this impossible position where I can't click the blue go live button to start the show because then it would start in the middle of a Scott Shapiro sentence, but I can't you know, so eventually I have to say, Scott, shut up so I can click the Google Google Live button. uh, That is the action that took place just before the show started. It's almost like a set. Ben, that's almost like a Sophie's Choice. I'm so sorry. It's it's terrible. I mean, like what the the position that I'm in. I'm put you in that horrible, horrible position. And it was like before, you know, you know, if you weren't tenured, it would be easy. But, you know, um, or if it were at a lesser school or if you weren't, you know, if you weren't a philosopher, but all those things together, are you going to interrupt a philosopher at the Yale Law School with tenure to start the show? Can't be done. It's like Stalin. We just have to keep clapping till our hands are stumped. (laughs) Right. Okay. I just want to say, I just want to say, I don't make the rules. Um, (laughs) Ah, oh, we are okay. Facebook now, Scott. Sorry. We are not <laughs> allowed to have fun anymore. But in lieu of fun, we are going to do something today that I have been uh, waiting to do since we started the Where's the Lie segment. When we first started this, there were a few people who I wanted to play Where's the Lie with. One of them is Barack Obama, because I think like getting a story about the presidency and you have to figure out whether it's true or false (laughs) would be like super fun. And I think he would totally deadpan it. um, And uh, it would be really fun to try to figure out if it was true. The other was Virginia Heffernan, because Virginia is, as I have said on the show many times before, one of the great talkers uh, in talking, I don't know what the the <laughs> noun form Nailed of it. that is. <laughs> yeah. um, in, and in, in in rhetoric and oration. Rhetoric oration. and oration. Thank you. Um, and uh, there's always a thread of a story when she gives one of these monologues of hers. Um, and so I thought we would bring the story out, and. Um, assess its truth. Okay, uh, here is a reminder of the rules. The poll is already up. Uh, 70% of you without Virginia having begun her story think she's lying. Um, (laughs) You can vote anytime. You can change your vote anytime. Um, uh, You can uh, uh, can, uh, note your... uh, 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 belief or disbelief and discuss it in the chat. There is one thing you cannot do. You cannot Google any publicly available facts uh, to assess because that is cheating. Will we know if you're cheating? No. no. We'll never know. You'll get away with it, but you will suck if you cheat. You'll just suck and you'll know you suck. At the end of the story, we will each ask three questions. We will bring in two members of the audience to ask three questions. If you would like to be said member of the audience, flag that in the ask a question box. If you ask another question, I will ignore you. Um, And then we will do the big reveal and see whether we can spot the lie in Virginia Heffernan's story, if there is one. So, Virginia, welcome back to In Lieu of Fun. No pressure or anything, but I've been looking forward to this uh, uh, for weeks and weeks and weeks. So, Well, I okay, I have two because I've now made a study of this game and I've decided to do to have all of it exist in the questions except a very short story. Do you know what I mean? So, like, some yeah. of them go on and on, but this is just... It's a, it's a, it's a high concept, you know, it's like so, one so, log line. So in other words, in other words, 
But the thing that we're assessing whether it's true is the short story yes. at the beginning. Yes. I, is this, is I just this love, I, I, lo I love this high concept, low concept thing. That's yeah. a great. This is like classic great... Virginia, to be fair. I, yeah. I, I, I really thought about it because I had a really long one with these detours, but then I still wondered if the detours were false. Anyway, so now it's just simple. That Just fact check this. Okay. Or tell me if you think it, I'm lying or not. Um, I went in, sorry, at 28, I went to interview Václav Havel in his castle in Prague with George Stephanopoulos. Wait, that can't be all. That was a sentence. Like you said it was a short story, but you didn't say it was like a fortune cookie. Well, that's where it, the questions, that's the, that is, that's where the, it's going to come out in the questions. All right. We're, we're going to play with this. We've only got 54 minutes left in the show. <laughs> yeah, we can... why, but that's why I think. That's Did you why break think... Scott or is he frozen? I think Scott's frozen. Oh, okay. <laughs> just, he, looked, he looked frozen oh. on my screen. And I'm just like, I was like, was that such a short story that like Scott is just completely. Yeah, Scott's broken from it. Yeah. All right, people um, are already asking questions. All right, so no, no. let's do As it. If I went with George and I did go with George. Yeah, so we're going to have a different, uh, slightly different format. We're going to have to adjust. The format is going to be, Kate, you ask whatever questions you want to mm -hmm. ask. And then I will, and then we'll just start. And Scott will, if, if Scott continues to exist. And then we will uh, bring people in to ask questions. So you, you get us started, KK. Okay. Where... You ha tell me the details. I would like, what was your flight itinerary? Mm. And where did you leave from? Where did you have, and where did you, what was your flight? Like what, what, what um, airline? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a great question. So it was 1998 and I can't remember the airline, um, but I flew New York. We flew direct New York, Prague. And he, I'll just give you another detail. He sat in first class and I sat in coach because we were traveling together, but I was in the support clerical role. And George Stephanopoulos was famous, as we all know. And so first class for him. And we were working for a magazine called Talk, edited by one Tina Brown. So she paid lavishly for him and not for me. It was direct flight, I don't know which airport in New York, Pretty sure Direct it was like, How long? Wait, this is going to be a second question. I have to watch myself. Mm -hmm. I would be so terrible I will, if there was I, a I, I, am, I don't need to Google this to tell people that uh, uh, Talk Magazine, edited by Tina Brown, really did exist. It, oh, was, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was her post New Yorker. Uh, 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 it, it flamed out fairly quickly. I want to say it had a relationship. Maybe with because Harvey it put Weinstein, George Stephanopoulos right? in first class. Um, all the way a, to like Czech wasn't there like a Miramax Harvey Weinstein part that of is, Talk yes, Magazine? I worked. I could do a whole other story on how I worked for Harvey Weinstein. Yes, um, at Talk, and I, you know, to my shame, was part of that open secret. I mean, I really did. I mean, I wasn't anywhere in his sights, but I really did know and walk around most days knowing like don't get near him he's like hurt other people um so yeah so um w were you an employee of talk magazine or were you a um uh how did you come to be uh support staff for George, uh, I was going to say George Papadopoulos, but that's because <laughs> looking boy. at your face when we have George and a and a Greek multisyllabic last name, <laughs> it's in our conversations. It's going to be Papadopoulos. It's always the coffee boy. It's always yeah. the coffee boy. Um, I so I had been a fact checker at the New Yorker and then um, disappeared for a little while into um, academia because for the money. Um, as Scott knows well, I just, I needed to get rich quick scheme and, you know, some people are yeah. multi-level marketing and I decided to try to do a dissertation. So I... No, that's that. not true. No, that's true. Oh, you're right. <laughs> that's, no lies. I didn't do it for the money, but I did go back. And, um, and then when I came back to journalism, I approached Tina and she got me, she let me come there as a fact checker as something like employee number six. We did a year long preparation for the launch. I was a fact checker and 
they were doing a lot of I, this is sort of this these days of synergy where the idea was like kind of studio system for like Marilyn Monroe, James Dean, the writers, and then just milk them for stories that they could then turn into movies and be sure the writer gets as paid as little as possible. Right. And good strategy. And so one of the things was to get the staff writers like Fleet Street style, the staff writers or the staff to do as much of the heavy lifting as possible so that we didn't have to pay top dollar for writers. So one of the things they had the super junior people like me do was um, read over like found documents like this, this guy that had kept a diary of working with Mike Nichols on Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. So that huge diary, just all these pages came over my desk and I was charged with going through it and trying to make an oral history out of it. So I was doing kind of stuff like that. And then that led to handling talent because there's nothing I am better at than dancing attendance on a male ego. It's just like, that is my jam. Just like saying things like, that is incredibly interesting. How did you know that? Wow, you must have done a lot of reading on that subject. Stop giving so, away <laughs> my secrets, Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> so I was put with the likes of Newt Gingrich and George Plimpton, and I just was splained and splained and filled with splanations from men. Um, and <laughs> one of the people who I was chosen to splain, because I was so good at taking splanations, was one George Stephanopoulos. And that meant preparing him for this for this interview by getting like decent English translations of some of um, Václav Havel's writings in Hungarian. Ha ha! Check. <laughs> Tried to like, say that, <laughs> yeah. to, like, make it look like I was lying. Um, <laughs> and um, and anyway, in Czech, so I got translations from the Czech to English, and I studied. You know, I prepped him like people did for like Charlie Rose in the day or whatever, um, and. <laughs> But then he needed someone to carry his pen and fact check and be sure he was on top of everything. And so I did some of the wrangling stuff when we got on the ground in Prague. And I have so much gossip about him. I don't know if okay, that's allowed. Yeah, uh, what, yeah, wait, about who? About Václav Havel or, or George Evan? Both, actually. Both. Okay, I'm so sorry. Actually, like, can, every time what? you say that name, I keep thinking that you, like, sneezed or something. Stephanopoulos <laughs> <laughs> like, or Havel? No. Václav. Va Václav. Va Va wait, I don't. Yeah. He says okay. Vaslav. Another thing I learned is he says Vaslav. Um, right. So, so, so this is a. Um, this is my question. To, 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 can I? Did you finish your question, Ben? No, no. Go ahead. We, we okay. Can take okay. Turns. Okay. I just didn't want to step on your turn. So. No, no. Um, okay. Okay. So I have like so many people have said to me about Vakal Havel that you think he's short. <laughs> But he's over six foot tall. How, how much taller? I'm like, is he like six one or is he more like six four? Like, what's the. Oh my God, that is such a good question. Um, I, um, I feel like I'm in serial, you know, the like podcast where no one could remember what happened to Adnan Syed. <laughs> like, I'm just like, is it possible that I just don't remember? He was seated seated, sitting seated. most of the time because he was <laughs> old and he okay. was he, with his second wife. His first wife was a good communist. I know I'm dodging the shortness question, but his second wife, who was very present, was an actor. So he was a little bit like the kind of Jerry Rubin. He was a little bit like those boomers or the people that were lefties. And then they, you know, people like a family values person like David Brooks, who then married like a sexy assistant. So, but the but for the left. So he was like a good communist, good stodgy, you know what I mean? Like a good stodgy <laughs> this person, like the, supportive the Woody person. Allen, that's the, that's the famous line from Woody Allen's Annie Hall, where he says, You're, I'm a bigot, but for the left. <laughs> yes, it's like that. He's, he's like right. a, he's like midlife crisis, like I want a more yeah. sexy life, except for the left. So like, mm. the, you know, so his second wife was an actor who probably didn't know from communism and was definitely not a velvet revolutionary and um and she was very pretty and she kept telling him to smile so part of why i'm thinking is that he was sitting in a um uh those rooms with all the light with um like a green not a green room but a sun porch sun room with windows 
you know, like a beautiful sun porch that was probably called like in Czech, it was probably called like the bloom room or something like it was in a <laughs> castle. And, um, and she was like outside sitting having tea, but periodically she would come in to tell him to smile. Right? Socialism with a human face, man. She was trying to like doll him Wrong up. Czech leader. Oh, um, that, that would be Dube <gasps> Czech. That was Dube Czech who said that? Yeah. Socialism with a human socialism face. With the, yeah, Václav Havel wasn't really into socialism at all. Um, um, so, so, so yeah. So, so anyways, he was married to her. I'm trying to think if they stood up. This is really avoiding the question of how tall he was. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, try, I'm like, I'm trying to recall it. I what mean, about George know, Stephanopoulos? How tall was he? He's a, he's short, as people say, <laughs> but he's like beautiful. He's fine. He's fine featured, and he has like a nice stature to him. I do have some gossip. Yeah. So let's let's. What was that yeah, yeah. rambling? In no point in that rambling, incoherent response. Like, what's was there an answer? Scott's well, question. It's really, it's really good that he, you know, you're saying most people come away and say that he was 6'4", because I do feel like that might have been a little leading. Like, you really have a lot of friends who've been surprised by the height of Vasil Pavel when they met him in person? Maybe. But I think that was a leading question because I don't remember anything outstanding about his height. I remember him being physically impressive, and I remember him mostly sitting down. But I know you guys sort of got Tom Nichols when he was talking about where he was oriented toward Bob Dole when he shook when he high five. He didn't get high five Nichols. Him. He basically like buffooned us all. He wiped so. the floor with us. All right, um, Buffalo. So, I, no, I, I, yeah, go ahead. I just, I, I just, this is a, like a point of order. Yeah. But is the is the um, contestant in this case the guest? Is, is are they allowed to attack the questioners? Um, <laughs> They're not I, allowed I, to violate okay. HIPAA. Okay, but, but okay, okay. But, but I, I think just, like, short of a HIPAA violation, uh, like, all she's all not game? allowed to scream out your blood type and. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, because I didn't know. Like she, like that's a, that was interesting that you went after me for raising this height issue well i sort of i just was into like, the like there was a little like, bit of when did you stop killing your wife thing of like you've got to tell me that he surprised you with how tall he is so then i might struggle to surprise Virginia, you with how tall I'm, he is but maybe he's short. i'm a lawyer i am a yeah. lawyer i'm an officer of the court i wouldn't do that all right i like it okay but Go ahead. how tall was uh, he you <laughs> George was short. I don't remember anything except a kind of heavy, big, like Gary Cohn head that's like, you know, made of stone that it was very, <laughs> very impressive and tends to make me think a person as tall. But I don't didn't clock like, him being he had, he, had, he had like a granite like features. Yeah. Right? You know what yeah. I'm talking You know, like I, like a freaking founding father. Like a Mount Rushmore <laughs> I, I, I want to go back to Talk Magazine. How long did you work there? Oh, okay. So two years and they were rollicking. And if I was going to tell another story, it would be about the boat I took to Liberty Island. Just a couple people. Um, let me, I, though really hard to remember. Oh, yes. Henry Kissinger was one. And the other one was Kate Moss. Not kidding. <gasps> Three of us on a boat and talked. And which, like speaking of I, HIPAA violations, her BMI is way too low. Her BMI <laughs> and, and and then and also but he like, makes up for it. And also the big granite head and the Kate Moss. I was just in heaven. I mean, who doesn't want to be on Liberty Island riding on a boat with you know? Like those were Henry things that Kessler. I was like, I'm, if I'd had a cell phone, it would have been like, Mom, guess. <laughs> um, did you so, work with Tom Watson at, at, at I did Talk work Magazine? With Tom Watson. I did That's your Tom third Watson. question. All oh. right. Um, yeah, I, I worked at Talk Magazine. It crashed. Uh, Tina used to say it crashed because of 9-11 or something or the internet, but there was just so much overspending there. And it was actually a Disney Harvey Weinstein, Tina Brown joint. So what could go wrong? Um, but so much did. There was, the, yeah, the stories are, because it was, we were celebrity besotted. But what was also nice for all of us who worked there, including Tom Watson, who's a very straight arrow, is that um, we got to pretend that we were above all the celebrities while also being really so freaking excited and blown away when like Paul Newman came to the office, you know, but we were like, no, we need to be covering really important news stories. Like what are the, what, you know, what's, what's going on in the Persian Gulf now? Like we've lost sight of the Persian Gulf. <laughs> I do not care that Padma Lakshmi, who Tina literally introduced as 
the great beauty of the Orient to us. Just saying. No, yeah, wow. Oh, my he was, God. He was dating Fatwa Saddam. I mean, Saza. What's that guy's name? Salman oh, Rushdie. my God. No, did, you call him, did, you, did you call him Fatwa? I called him Fatwa. <laughs> you called him, him Fatwa. No, I would, okay, I don't even. There I, was hey, a Fatwa against him. Live but, TV, we don't. Author of Midnight Children. We don't, we, Midnight we, Children. we don't, uh, we don't, we, we don't uh, attack our guests over, over their, oh. their uh, Freudian slips. Yeah, no, okay, I was wait, calling man. him like, like the way you would call like champagne scott shapiro like his, your, his nickname is, <laughs> you know what i mean like the like the way you know yeah. him for you know no no, 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 no. I, me. And, I, I get I, it i get it but, but, but virginia what goes around like, comes around you attack the guest uh, you attack the questioner the questioner is going to go after you just saying i'm true. just saying scott by the way mixing it up on twitter with you is a lot of fun oh, um, good, all right likewise any other okay, questions okay. keep from coming yeah, I want that. I, I'm going to burn a whole question. I still have one more. I'm going to burn a whole question. What's the George Stephanopoulos gossip like? Come on. Oh, yeah. Okay. So anyone who knows, like, his marriage history or dating history could probably fact check this in their brains. But he was at the time single. And he was for a while, he was like a bachelor. And his, so, and his father is a... Um, Eastern Orthodox, Greek Orthodox priest who runs an important church. I don't know if he's still alive. But um, so there was some idea that he might have to marry a Greek Orthodox woman. And he, he told this to me as his like dutiful assistant carrying like, I think literally a briefcase of his wearing a suit, late 90s suit I was. Um, and um, in Prague, but he was trying was, to get married or? and he wanted to get married in Prague, in Prague. So he had done in the pre-Tinder, pre-Bumble, he had done a kind of dating service that was like um, for high-end something, executives. And it was for... Uh-oh. Should we just make up the rest of that story? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of a dramatic thing. I know. Yeah. It's, I think that George just came and bumped off Virginia <laughs> yeah, just uh... the rest of that story from 1998. That actually didn't seem too, it was going to be too salacious, but who well, knows? Well, we, we were maybe just getting to the salacious part. Yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can was can, wondering, can like, someone tell yeah. me while, we, while she's gone who this person is that she's meeting? <laughs> Václav Havel? Yeah, I recognize the name. I think it's in a Fam Billy Joel song or something. Famous Czech but... dissident becomes the president of Czechoslovakia uh, after uh, the... Um, uh, uh, after communism fell. Yes. Okay. Very celebrated. Like I, uh, I, it's a Nobel Prize uh, Peace Prize. I remember. I know like that about him, but like not like what he did to get the Nobel Prize. If that makes sense. Well, Probably not. He was, anyway. Uh, I think he was a fighting a playwright. Uh, huh. Huh. Prisoner of conscience. Yeah. Um. I was I was confused. And, and he him wrote with the that. New Yorker's obituary of Frank Zappa. Oh. Um, wow. Wow. That's kind of wow. cool. When Zappa yeah. died, um, I'm trying to get Virginia back on the screen. When Zappa oh. died, uh, Václav Havel, who was then the sitting uh, president of Czechoslovakia, wrote an obituary that said that when he was in internal exile, uh, which was basically house arrest in in. Uh, for years, uh, they used he used to play Frank Zappa records to remind himself that there were places in the world where you could say anything. Wow, that's amazing! That's, that's incredible! Freaking amazing! Um, wow, yeah. Wow. Let me let me while while, while <laughs> I will see if I can dig it. Ben, up. you're being paged by John Hawkinson. You have to give Paula permission to Google Frank Zappa because she doesn't know who Frank Zappa is. Uh, Paula, this is you... your first of. This is your okay. first. Okay, Virginia, like... you vanished in the middle of just as George Stephanopoulos was signing up for a dating service for Dang. elite men. All right. All um, right. You disappeared, and we thought George had his had his <laughs> ABC hackers <laughs> hack in lieu of fun to stop you from. So, so okay, so uh, just to be kind to him, he um he he did he flew someone over. 
and she was Eastern European, as maybe some people that you fly over places to meet you are, or maybe not. I'm not saying anything about the Ukraine girls um, really knock you out. Um, so anyway, he flew over this woman and she, to his great disappointment, had acne. And so there was a lot of the time spent before we went to we have Kate, you just gave like a sad look, like, hmm, oh, acne. I mean, you're trying to find like a hot escort and she has acne. I, I mean, a that little bit, is. but that was also uh, simultaneous to me opening the link to Vakov Havel and looking at him for like the first time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, <laughs> that happened. But, <laughs> is that Googling? That could be Googling. Um, no, it's a C SPAN thing. I didn't look at anything else. I'm saving it for later. Sorry. I will say, I do. I think that he was doing like the best one can single and dating. And I don't mean to hold this against him. And then he came back and met his now wife and has seemed very happy with her ever since. So that is, this is not to disparage him. We all do, you know, we're all freaks when we're single, right? Uh, yeah? yeah, sure. So what's yeah. your Václav Havel gossip? Oh, all right. So mostly that his wife was forever coming in to be like in check, like Václav, smile. Like it was just like <laughs> early capitalism. I mean, it hadn't been that long. And all of a sudden, everything had to be like in color. There was no, you know, there was no, nothing brutalist left. And it was, I mean, it was just super cool. She even put like bronzer and, and you know, and I, well, not, I, not everything had to be black and white. <laughs> it was right, exactly. It, it was not everything had to be black and white or like scotchy. And they, hadn't, they didn't have to be like egalitarian. She could be just like, beautiful and he can do time of cabbage. Sorry. <laughs> Two times of cabbage. Exactly. Exactly. But, but they were like as you guys probably remember, Prague like skipped some steps and you know, Prague got its I don't think they really took the bit, do you? It feels like they just didn't really go down the Iron Curtain. Like they just kind of their Iron Curtain was a little more it had already a little more, I don't know. A little more see through. There's a more, 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 more fence, more fence. More, yes, yes, exactly. More uh, like a, I was gonna, I don't know what it was, more, but in any case. More of a border back, wall. Yes, like they came back to life really quickly. You know, yeah. they didn't, they didn't, um, they were just like waiting. So that's what he seemed. And it seemed that she really liked that he was here in the West because for maybe some of our younger brothers and sisters who don't remember that he was like a velvet underground person, which, um, you know, he, he, he loved the velvet underground. And so George and he talked about Lou Reed and that made his new wife feel like he was kind of like a pop star instead of, you know, this kind of random head of state in a small European recently communist country. Um, cause remember that about Havel? Like he was different from, your Lech Valenzos and stuff. He was, he had some razzle dazzle in the U.S. I uh, did not know about the razzle dazzle. Definitely Lech Valenza, I don't think had razzle dazzle in the West. You got to um, remember the Lou Reed stuff with Havel. No. No. The, oh well, that's the Velvet Revolution. Yeah, all right. All Someone right. in the comments knows that, and don't leave me hanging. Someone is there any me. relief? This is not one of my questions. I'm pointing it towards my, my co-host. Any, is there like Velvet Underground, like a pun in the Velvet Revolution? Nothing, yes. nothing, no, it there's, is? Okay. I think there's some, I think there is some either urban myth or some accident or some possibility that one thing inspired the other. Says Lisa agrees. Yes, Virginia, someone says Lou Reed. I know they have something to do with each other. And I'm not sure what it is because and one thing I did was not Google anything before I'm answering questions. So you're I'm al you're allowed to Google before the show, but I Virginia. didn't want to. I didn't want to because I thought that it would be more authentic because I couldn't remember things. Right. Okay. So so uh, I wasn't coached. I wasn't coached. It's time to God, take audience questions. Mean. Smile, Doctor Doom. The floor is yours. You get three questions. Oh, I, I really only needed one. All right, um, you can take one. Thank you. Um, Virginia, um, you, you mentioned that uh, Mr. Stephanopoulos uh, dated. Um, can you recall any of his uh, 
girlfriends and uh, American girlfriends and where they went to school. <laughs> where they went to school? Um, it yeah. It seems like it's teeing up a better story than mine. And that, like, uh, I don't... I remember him talking about what he needed in a girlfriend. I don't remember him, nor do I remember reading in The Observer or whatever about his girlfriends and where they went to college. The only girlfriend I can think of is that woman that he met that I described so persuasively. And the, uh, what's it called? And the woman that he married, who I think is named Alexandria and is also an actress. Okay, well then I'm done with my questions because that was that was a dry a dry uh, dry hole. So. All right. No, who was it though? Who was it? Um, this is a, a woman who uh, who uh, also dated the one of the founders of uh, eBay and uh, broke off with him and. Uh, Stephanopoulos was one of one of the people that she dated. Anyway, so all right, I'm glad, that's it. I'm glad it ended there because up until that last <laughs> piece of information, the relevance was really tenuous. <laughs> Daniel, in his native habitat, you have three questions. Um, was the show a ruthless you questioner? Sorry, Daniel. Was the show you were working for syndicated at the time? Um, I wasn't working for a show. For some reason, he was brought in as a print journalist. And I don't remember what his deal with ABC was at the time. But he was just supposed to um, do a whole interview. And then I was supposed to transcribe it. Clerical, secretarial. I was not really there as a journalist. I was supposed to transcribe the whole hours and hours of interview through a translator um, and then uh, cut it into what I thought was good for the magazine. So anyway, none of it was on TV is the answer to that. There were no cameras around except for like some stills. Um, what language did you transcribe the interview into? English, but I, sorry, there was a tran there was an interpreter on the spot. So, and he spoke a little English if I remember, but I just transcribed what the, we recorded it, right? So then there was like a check. So then that on the thing was indecipherable or whatever. It's just like they had deleted words nobody understands. And then it was what the interpreter said. And then it was what George Stephanopoulos said, if I remember right. And then I transcribed it from the tapes. So I, I don't want to pretend I speak Czech. And where was the interview printed? Talk magazine, which is unfindable online right now. I will verify again also. That Talk Magazine really was real. Yeah. <clears throat> and it really did. Uh, I, I did not know that Virginia worked for Talk Magazine mm -hmm. at any point, but uh, her account of things connected with it uh, has the ring of truth to me. Um, well... Do you guys have additional questions for Virginia on this subject before we go to the big reveal? I, I only got to ask one question. Then yeah, you better I have ask, one left too. Then you guys better ask more. I'm all um, tapped out. I, you know, I've been listening carefully to this whole call, or whatever you guys call it, a show, right? Right, sure. <laughs> um, and um, and I can't recall you ever saying what the conversation was about involving Václav Havel. Right. So it was, it was a long conversation and it was about a new book he had, a new book that was just out at the time and that George had had to like get a hasty translation of and read. But George was really interested in religion. So he asked a lot of questions about communist atheism. And also, I think at the time, he was still like quite interested in Eastern Orthodox religions. Um, and so it was really heady. And he was really prepared to talk about. What was the book about? Yeah. What was Havel's book about? 
That is a very good question. I have a signed copy around here somewhere and it's in check and I cannot remember. I mean, it was nonfiction and it's a checkbook, and, but yes. I don't remember. So we have, Honestly, I don't remember. Petra, we have an actual check person here um, mm. who I think should, Petra, you should come on and- And uh, take Dr. Doom's extra two questions. Yeah, uh, we're gonna bring on Petra to to ask you some, uh, to interrogate the Václav Havel plausibility here. Um, uh, and by the way, if this oh, is not for, oh yeah, go uh, ahead. Uh, she I has rejected drop. the- uh, She doesn't usually come on screen. Was we're trying again. Um, no, I think she doesn't want to come on screen. Oh. Um, oh, it doesn't right. work for me tonight. Okay. Uh, but Kate? okay. Um, hmm. Uh. What did you do when you weren't working while you were in Czechoslovakia? Uh, okay, so part of the reason I so much remember ha that he was dating is that I spent almost no time with him. And there was a restaurant called... Um, so uh, another great thing about Prague at that moment for anyone who went there or went there, I had been there closer to the demise of the... Iron Curtain. Um, and one of the great things about Prague was that they quickly embraced Soviet kitsch the way New York did. So like every other restaurant was called like KGB or whatever. And this one, the one that I went to was called Pravda. And it was, I just loved it. And it was like black and white and chic and nineties. And I just like sat there and was amazed that I was there and then did a little a little touristing down like these little little stony ways but of course we were only there in i don't remember the hotel at all we were only there for like two nights you know it was as cheap as pos as tina could get it so i didn't get to do and mostly we were just like prepping for the interview going to the interview um and um i remember overhearing people saying in english like i can still have this guy's accent in my head um walking along like the embankment of the river there, whose name I'm also forgetting. Um, and the guy was saying, the young are very much mouthing the platitudes of capitalism. <laughs> I just remember hearing him say that. And I was like, mouthing the platitudes, right? <laughs> and, and, you know, I was like, I can mouth them. Here, I'm going to mouth a platitude Yeah, exactly. I'll mouth a platitude. Exactly. So I like... The so, anyway, invisible <laughs> Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, capital gains, no. Um, yes. Libertarian, Ayn Rand. Um, but um, I... So that's what I remember doing was like kind of strolling around and I remember just like, yeah, these little pathways and then being at this restaurant called Pravda. Paula, you get a question. You have a question about uh, uh, Virginia's clothes. Uh, yeah, you want me to ask my first question? I want you to ask whatever question you want. Okay, uh, what were you wearing at the time? Oh my gosh, I'm so glad you asked me. Okay, do you remember there's this brand called- no. Team <laughs> don't, Team don't say do you okay. remember. Okay, okay. Five years there, ago. there is this a brand <laughs> called, yeah, um, there is a brand called Teen Flow, which was not for teens. I don't really understand it. I want to look it up after, but I can picture the logo. And it wasn't like, like how Forever 21 is for 13 year olds. <laughs> it was, right, exactly, yeah, exactly. Maybe that's it. Right. <laughs> but it was, it was like, it was like um, workwear and it was a great, it was a um, dark green suit. It was from Tango in Brooklyn Heights, if anyone lives there. And it was, I, I'm so glad you asked this, but so of course, and I went into the, um, of course, that's all I cared about. I went into the like boutique place and was like, I'm interviewing Bas of Havel with George <laughs> Stephanopoulos and I need an outfit. And I let made them like just cover me with whatever. But of course, like, what did they care? Like, I, it wasn't the Tonys, like who cares what I was wearing? But anyway, it was um, green and I might even. Uh oh. Oh no. 
we've lost Virginia again. Is that a sign or? I think, you know, George Stephanopoulos, it's maybe it's. And it was all one. It was a full Oh, wait, suit you got to start like again. High heels. You, you got, you, uh, you froze. You were again. saying green. Oh. You froze a green. green. Oh, okay. Froze a green. Sorry. It was, um, it was like possibly double breasted tight jacket and then slightly flared pants and high heels. And a very, very little remembered idea of the nineties that really was a nineties thing. Dark green, someone asked, it was like, um, yes, yeah, somewhere between like a dark green and, and like a, and like army green actually. Um, yeah, it was really tight and <laughs> it was really, um, and it was really high heels and that so, there was a lot of walking around to get through the gap. So Paula, you also had a question about, uh, you know, whether Virginia had a moment where she was like, mm -hmm. yeah, so I, yeah. When did you have your like, oh shit moment? Because I feel like whenever someone has an oh shit moment, they like, they kind of remember the scene around them. Um, you mean like, I can't believe this is happening? Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, you're yeah. like in the presidential palace. In the presidential um, palace. You it know, total... meeting with the president, with George Stephanopoulos. And was there like a yeah. moment where you're like, uh, have yeah. an out of body experience watching yeah. yourself um watch you know watching yourself sitting there uh with the president of Czechoslovakia famed totally. dissident and uh 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 and George Stephanopoulos in your uh green uh yes double breasted suit <laughs> i was um yes i was um exactly kate totally remember uniform outfits i was um it was i was totally just floating during it but i uh, sometime in the 90s someone taught me this french word do you ever use this word habitué habitué like someone who's just very, very comfortable and habituated to places. So I decided, it's like how some people decide they're gonna have repose, like that phrase from Fitzgerald. Well, anyway, so I was gonna have repose, yes, but I also wanted to be an habitué everywhere I went. So I thought I am sitting here and there is no way I'm gonna give away that I'm like from Hanover, New Hampshire, 03755, a tiny town and that, you know, I was scared to go to college in Philadelphia because it seemed too <laughs> giant and overwhelming. And I am going to, and I'm like looking at, at George Stephanopoulos and history in the form of, I mean, I'm actually, there is a part of me that's just like, this was incredible because, you know, the wall had just fallen. My parents got me like a chip of it with a little bit of, um, of, uh, um, spray paint on the on it on the a chip you know piece of the berlin wall you guys i don't know and um and i like had it you know and i was really freaking excited about what was next and i and like people were like starting cafes in prague and 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 then here was havel and havel was gonna help with this transition and it looked like a solid communist or former one-time communist was really going to be able to like accommodate this thing so that this something that i thought would be a crisis was you know was going to end in nuclear war because that's what I thought it would end in had ended in this brought to this soft velvety landing with this very personable brilliant philosopher and I sort of thought like briefly in this 90s way that we might have this wonderful soft landing for liberal humanism and liberal democracy I mean I, that's super corny but that's my oh shit moment and yeah. it was you know right like that was such a beautiful time you know and it's like so yeah. silly it was like the son of this greek orthodox you know it's a person that had worked for clinton who of course had been my hero and then and then he was trying to understand what was going to happen to the eastern orthodox churches in the region and i got to be present for it and carry pencils and then there was this actress who was doting on you on, earlier uh, said you novel. carried pens aha <laughs> True. I don't, think, I don't think, to be honest, I carried either. Both of those were proxies for water, which I basically was carrying just anything he needed. Um, but but the, I guess the oh shit moment was when I looked, when I was staring at the, out the window at his wife, his blonde wife, and she was looking in to be sure he was smiling, just like many of our mothers might look to our fathers to be sure if they were smiling. And something about that exchange in the 
why am I forgetting the name of that kind of room? It's like a greenhouse, like a sunroom. It is a sunroom. Okay, so outside the sunroom, beautiful rolling lands. She keeps nervously looking in to be sure he's smiling for the cameras. That was just this like incredible moment of capitalism, liberal democracy, the end of communism, this old life, the old world, new world. Are we all gonna make this thing work? So I would say that was the oh shit moment of like, I am at a nexus of history that I can never explain to the kids at home. Oblio 23, you have a question. Real easy question. Was the was this all conducted in English or did you have a translator? There was an interpreter present in the moment. And um, and to be honest, because, you know, we're being honest, um, the the I can't remember the sequence of things. I mean, the interpreter was his like the interpreter didn't travel with us and he had kind of like a team of people around him and one of them was his was that person um and yeah um but there was an interpreter yeah george I think didn't it's time to vote anything check yeah i think it's time to vote right at least all so right he might have so here is uh this is your right now uh there is a gavin newsom sized <laughs> vote for this being a lie by Virginia, uh, 66.1% think this story is bullshit. Um, uh, Kate, what do you think? I think it's bullshit. Why do you think it's bullshit? I, I just like there's like, um, although I do appreciate uh, the, I do appreciate some of the detail, like what she was wearing. I also kind of think that there are certain things that would probably have stood out. Like, I feel like you'd remember like a translator more distinctly in the room and the conversation and like not standing around awkwardly waiting for a translation or things like that. Um, so yeah. Scott? Uh I unfortunately, I mean, I feel so bad because I like you so much, Virginia, but I think it was a lie. Um, and it pains me to say this, um, but I mean, I have to tell the truth, um, unlike you. Um, the, the, the thing is that I feel like you had said, like you spent all this time researching and then you were like, oh no, I'm just going to go off. Like, why would you have to research the truth? Um, and then you didn't want to look at Google because you didn't want to like be canned. But like, again, like if it's the truth, why would you worry about that? But more than anything, the fact that you like, of course, you know, Vaclav Havel, I think is not tall, but the fact that you didn't know that immediately and that you then wanted to throw it back on question? me. Yeah, I lied to my Oh, wow, um, you didn't but, even have to. You didn't even say six feet on Tinder, Virginia. But, I'm right, six feet. I didn't say six feet. Tinder, six feet. I Paula, didn't. what, what, uh, what is your verdict? Whoops. Yeah. I think she's lying. Um, I think if you have an experience like that, at least when I do, you you really can't confine yourself to a sentence. Like there's so much you want to say mm. because there's so much to it and after years of reflection you can like put the points together and it becomes this really nice narrative so i would say bullshit all right daniel what do you say um i'm with the rest of the crew and i think it's a lie all right i am going to take the uh contrary position here and I want to I, I want to explain why, because uh, I seem to be uh, gravely outnumbered. Um, um, but so first of all, there is part of this story that I know to be true. Um, that is. Virginia's account of Talk magazine is. Uh, uh, is correct. And I believe that she really did work there because her account of Tom Watson um, 
uh, trying to persuade himself that they were doing high-minded stuff while in fact being um, uh, uh, infatuated with, you know, the celebs as they came, as Tina brought them in. Uh, that's, that's definitely real. Um, uh, and uh, so then the question becomes, would Tina uh, have contracted George Stephanopoulos to go out and meet with uh, and interview Václav Havel for a kind of uh, vapid celebrity interview? Um, and the answer is yes. So that's exactly the kind of thing <laughs> she would have done. And then the question becomes, would she have sent a young, uh, uh, eager uh, editorial staffer on to uh, wait hand and foot on George Stephanopoulos while he did so? And the answer to that is, yeah, that's totally plausible. And so I think the basic structure of the story is is very plausible and has a lot of things right about it. Now, could this be because uh, Virginia, in fact, worked at Talk Magazine and saw George Stephanopoulos sent out to do this or somebody like him? Uh, and um, yeah, and that the, that this happened or something like it happened and she therefore is in a good position to construct the story. Yeah, but I'm actually going to go with this story is basically true. I think that I just want to point out for the record, Ben, that the last time you decided to vote on something based on your knowledge of an editorial process, it was Jonathan Rausch. And Jonathan Rausch completely screwed you and that maybe Virginia is taking advantage of that exact same... I, I just want to say the... Uh, the upside of being right when everybody else is on the other side of this issue is greater Worth than it. the downside of being Fair. wrong. Um, Virginia. Ben, you're right. Telling the truth. Every word. Oh, really? The only place you can find this online is in The Observer. Alexandra Wentworth wrote about... <laughs> I gave Alexander Wentworth, George Stephanopoulos' wife, a bad review of a show she did. And in response, in the days when people had, there was a fray around stuff like this, she responded to my bad review by taking to the observer and saying I'd had a crush on her husband that we'd traveled to Prague once and I'd never gone out and that's why I was mad. And Well, writer, you left out that goss. Gee, well, I asked you about goss. <laughs> that is, that is, that that happened after it, and you know, whatever. But the, but so, and I said I did clerical work for him because that count as going on a date. Um, and she <laughs> then publicly apologized um, for saying. I mean, I there couldn't have been less between George and me, and I didn't anyway. But yes, all true. And the things I don't remember. I mean, is Havel especially short? I just remember him being not noticing how tall he was. Um, no, I. I, I I, I just um, like I just made something up, and I thought if you said I think he he's really oh, I maybe six one or something like that. Yeah. Um, that it, but but because I think he is short, but it was the, I mean what was I going to say that he has really he actually has purple hair. I mean it was like hard to yeah, to yeah, like yeah. come up with. No, no, no. You know, I like. What's, I liked what's, it. It, what's his what what's his blood type? I mean, I hope that I like. It wasn't like one of those like James Comey, Philip Roth things where they stand up and you're like, what the hell? So when you said six four, I was like, yeah, I think you're like misleading me because there's no way I would have remembered if he was six four. Anyway, okay. that's that. Okay. How did I forget? I forget things. I just truly like that's why I didn't look up um, anything in advance. Like I was like, I will trust my memory. The reason I don't tell the story is there's not like really a great, you know, they're not three acts to it. There's like, it's just a, it's just name dropping, you know, it doesn't have like a really nice moment when like a thing happened that was surprising. It's just like three names and like the subtlety of his relationship with his wife is something that like I could write about, I mean, I try to write about and like a little perfect little gem of a short story for an Iowa writer's workshop class. <laughs> but otherwise, there's not like a rollicking in lieu of fun tale about it. So I just thought I'd keep it short because it sounds so preposterous. 
and then let details come out in questions. So and I, I a, fooled you all. I have a retrospective question about this. No, I'll give it. So um, you made a study today of past uh, episodes of Where's the Lie by way of preparation. Mm -hmm. Who fooled you and who did you have totally pegged? Uh, oh, that's a, okay. That's great. Um, I honestly, I love Mike Godwin so much. <laughs> but oh, yeah. That, oh, that, was, that, was, that was a great so story. Good. It's such That's a great. good story. But that was yeah. where I got the idea that if the story is really long, it's confused. Like the, the burden on you might be less. I don't know. I just, I, I sort of was like, yeah, maybe the story needs to be shorter because you know, that's how it is on anyway. So that's where I got that idea. Um, I was definitely, you know, I just liked his story a lot. Um, they and then, all involve, Tom they all involve a famous person. Like they all have involved a famous person. Like nice they're all so about sad with like a famous person as like a key po point to them. I've been thinking about this a lot. I wasn't going to tell a story about um, a, a kind of like winter yeah, carnival. It was about the no. bunny ranch and like this famous madam. Mm. I, I, I've and, never like, heard about, of her. And it was about like <laughs> I mean, the editor of the Atlantic. I mean, not meeting them, but like, I don't know. Anyways, you're right. It wasn't as much about seeing, about someone meeting someone famous. I was going to tell about this druggy high school experience, and um, and I like had tons of details, and my the sheriff came after me and stuff. Didn't have any famous people in it, um, except for a guy that later became a hedge funder, whose name you wouldn't recognize, but that was like I had a huge crush on, and um, and uh, so I didn't go with that because. It was a little too salacious, honestly. Like, and also, there's this little sort of quite humiliating with the sheriff thing. It's, you guys are it's, it's, bringing it's, the mood down. It's, is it? Is it still too soon? <laughs> it's still too far. <laughs> I was sixteen, exactly. Um, well, Virginia Heffernan, you're a great American for fooling everybody me except surprised. me. That was great. Um, Thank you. That was that was that was fa that was really fantastic. You really. Um, you really fooled me. Uh, I mean, really fooled me. That it I was, was, I mean, it's, it, it's it, the it, perfect. It's the perfect persuasiveness when you fool everybody except me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really the way it's supposed to be done. Um, yeah. Someday, by the way, I really would like to review how that '90s moment for those of us who remember it, where it, like it, it's just oh, silly. I, and now it's like, is it just because we were young? Like it's just no. I, I think about that all the. I think about that all the time. I, I don't know if you do too, Ben, but I do yeah, think the about time. the and the insanity of the '90s when, like, we make fun of the end of history type of thing, but it did, in a way, kind of feel like the lion was lying down with the lamb, and yes. it was all it was all yes. going to work. It would like it really was going to finally work out. Um, yes. And, you know, you know that and then worth yeah. You know that Wordsworth line, bliss was it in that dawn to be alive and to be young was very heaven. Honestly, oh, not kidding. Nice. It's what he, French Revolution, yeah. another thing that didn't end as well as it started, but. Right, I no, know actually that. Actually, it didn't yeah. start well either. <laughs> good point. <laughs> yeah, good point, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we are going to leave it there. We will be back tomorrow. We have no idea who the guest is going to be, whether they will be telling the truth or lying. Uh, can I can I make a plug for my show? Yeah, it starts, of it starts when, uh, Thursday, and it is called "This Is Critical," and it's uh, critical cultural criticism. Um, and the first oh. episode is on trash talking and flopping um, with a professional basketball player who really tells you how to trash talk and how to flop successfully. Um, and I think it's going to be great. It's on Stitcher. It's called This Is Critical at This Critical Pod on Twitter. Cool. So exciting. Uh, and when you have to come back on the show to talk about it when there are a few episodes up. Yeah, totally. Oh, I definitely will. You guys are going to love, really love this show. Flop, by the way, Rob, like a soccer player, those operatic falls where people exaggerate their injuries. Um, yeah, I think you're going to really like it. Cool. I learned how to do those falls. You did? Yeah. When you when you learn um, uh, Aikido and certain martial arts, you learn how to do high falls. 
Right. Oh. It's called Ukem. It's called Ukemi. Ukemi. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, Very cool. Yep. It's a, uh, and you can make them look about as uh, flamboyant and dramatic as you want. Yeah. I try to do that in my personal life. Yeah. Just get a lot of sympathy <laughs> for intention and sympathy. Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> I actually, I, I, I never mentioned this, but I have videotape of my brown belt test when I was 23 years old. Wow. Should I should I get it converted and show it? I think you should. Yes, obviously. Okay. Oh my okay. gosh, totally. Okay. That'll uh, be I, 22 you, you hours me into and, it. and 53 minutes, at 59 minutes from now, we'll see Scott's brown belt exam. <laughs> <laughs> and until then, Virginia? We can't have fun anymore, but this is what we do in you. Yeah. Of fun. <laughs> yes. We'll see you tomorrow. Better. Better. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.